Okay, we're on Lincoln Street in Blair, and this is where most of my memories uh, started. I was four when we moved to the red house across the street, which was yellow when I lived there, but fortunately they've kept the house up through the years. And I moved out when I was 16, and uh, so this is the house that my memories mostly are from. The window with a little porch out over it, it was my bedroom. And I remember one time my cousin and I decided to put two chairs out there and make a little veranda until my dad come home and realized the chair legs were about ready to go over the roof. So I said, that's a memory. But I said, yeah, a lot of good memories from that. And on the corner is the Baptist church. And I said, I went there as a child uh, for a while. And I said, and then when I would run away, I'd go sit on the steps at the church until I realized mom could have cared less where I was, because she knew where I was, so I said that took care of that. But I said, I, I remember a lot of the neighbors, a lot of the homes are gone now. There was a house right across the street where two maid, old maid sisters lived. They had an electric car, they'd get out on Sunday morning and maybe drive to church, which was a block away. And I said, I remember a lot of the people that in the neighborhood that are, of course, now gone, and the houses, some have been replaced. but. In the summer, you know, you sit out on the porch and visit with the neighbors, and I lived there when I met Bob, so that's part of my memories of just going back to the good times in Blair. And right to the left where I'm standing was a gas station, and it had this beautiful slate parking lot, drive-through, driveway. So I put on my roller skates and skate there, and it was just like skating on glass. And that memory is, I think about that as I stand here. Close to town, I could walk up to the movie theater in five minutes, the grocery store in five minutes. Everything was close by. I said where I could walk to school in 10 minutes. So I said it was a good location, and just a good town and a good, good uh, time to grow up in. I had a uh, big yellow cat when I lived here. And we got him as a kitten from a friend, and he was one of the smallest of the litter. Brought him home, and mother didn't think he'd survive, but he did, turned into a big yellow tomcat. And he was gone one day. And of course, I'm hunting high and low for him, because he was indoor, outdoor. So I'm walking to school, and about two blocks over south, why I look, and people have a house with kind of an indoor greenhouse. And I look, and pretty soon I see a yellow cat face looking out of a plant. I told mom, I said, I think our cat has moved on to the neighbors. Well, he had. He found a lot better home over there with much better conditions. Eventually, he came back, but I had him off and on for probably 10 years until he passed away. But anyway, yeah, that, I wasn't allowed to have a dog, but I could have a cat. We had a porch swing on that little porch. And in the summer, just enjoyed sitting and watching it rain and sitting on the porch swing and just feeling safe and, and just in a good place. And uh, the alley uh, had a funeral home behind it, so the uh, kind of, just everybody knew everybody, knew what they did, what was going on pretty much. And where I'm looking now, uh, straight into this yard, there was some peony bushes that I remember. Uh, just as a kid going out and picking the peonies and bringing them in for mom. And I can still see my dad walking home from two blocks where he worked, coming through the yard, and digging a dandelion or grabbing the lawnmower at night and cleaning up around the place. But um, it's uh, lots of memories, just all good memories. So. This is amazing. These windows are still the same. This is where Mother always put the Christmas tree up that middle window. It's where the Christmas tree went. That was always a. But, but, oh golly, this is cool. This, they've just made it so nice. I just never. But, I just commend the, the work in this house, honey, it's beautiful. I never dreamed that they could transform an old house into such a beautiful home. Yeah, so there's, like, there's two bathrooms now, and yeah. I can show you upstairs. Um, but So they've moved the bathroom, and I'm assuming they must have either moved it or cut it in half could to make be. the office. 
Okay. How big it used to be. See, see this was, like I said, this was, well, the front living room, and this is a dining room. And then this was my bedroom part okay. of the time. And then the other part of the time, I slept upstairs in the summer because in the winter, the upstairs was too cold. Right. So this was a probably a oh, 10 by 12 bedroom. Okay. And then, but see, they've just opened it up. So this house has been basically. What year do you think this house was built, Mom? Probably, I would say maybe late 1800s, early 1900s. A gentleman that lived south of Blair had a gas station, just a little uh, small gas station. And he um, owned this house. And I think Dad paid, I think the rent back in the day was $45. And a month, and uh, but you know, don't you wish it was still. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't. But anyway, then he just up and announced he was moving up that winter. So the folks back in those years it was hard to find rental. So we had temporary rental for a while, and then they found another house over what they call South Street. in front of what used to be Benton Chevrolet Garage, where my dad worked most of his working years, most of them. When I was young, I used to go and come in, which would have been bay doors, and go in where he was working either on body work or mechanic, and walk home a little bit newer. So back when I was young, this is the way the front of the building looked, with the gas pumps, and that's the way the building was back between the 40s and probably late 50s. So that, and then next door was a little, uh, a little restaurant. And I remember once in a while walking up to get dad and he might've slipped over to the restaurant for something quick and walking in there and walking back with him. But that's exactly the way it looked back in, in the day. I was probably about 14. It was in the fall and I walked to the corner and there was a whole military group moving uh, their equipment and I know they were heading to Camp Carson, Colorado, and I don't know where they were coming from. But there was uh, army trucks and jeeps, and as I stood there, one good-looking guy threw his uh, address out. So I grabbed it up and sent a picture and wrote to him for a few years, and then I'm sure he got out of the army and got married, but I often wondered what happened to him. <laughs> and yeah, that was, that was, I thought that was pretty exciting. I think I didn't tell my mother. She probably thought I was. <laughs> but he wrote back. Oh, yes, he wrote back right away. He wrote, I think I, we probably wrote back for a couple of years. And then you know how those things, they kind of, they kind of move on. But yeah, that was kind of cool. Well, I'm Nancy Billows. And uh, I met your mom probably when we were in grade school. We might have even met in first grade at Central, but I moved in the middle of the year to Cross from West School. But then I started, we still kept up uh, our friendship, and uh, I would go to her birthday parties, and she would come to mine, and my mother was a great photographer and a great keeper of scrapbooks, so I have pictures of Pat and I since we were little girls. And my memory is her special birthday on a, uh, April 12th, 1945, when my mother received a phone call and she started crying. And this was strange to me because I never saw my mother cry. And it turned out Roosevelt had died. I was also going to Pat's birthday party. So we went, but I will never forget her birthday, April 12th, 1945, was a memorable day for everybody, for our nation. So uh, when Roosevelt died, and when I say my mother cried, my mother was a staunch Republican. So that's what Roosevelt meant to her. But uh, we were in 4-H together. tap dance, we did uh, Sybil Rathman, we took lessons from her, tap, we did the skater's waltz, we probably could still do it. Hop, shuffle, step, step, right Pat? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what the, and so mom said, okay, so she, she grew up uh, 60 feet from a Baptist church, but she came to your church. Because yeah, now that is an interesting story and something I just, a revelation I had from your mom not long ago. I said to her one day, Pat, why did you always come to the Methodist Church and to our youth group and to Sunday school? And 
choir. She was a member of everything in the church for the youth and the young people. And I said, your mom was a bleeding Baptist. Why did you come to the Methodist church? She said, because you did. Mm -hmm. That's that right. touched me it's absolutely in right. so many ways. So yeah. you bet. Yeah. That did. <clears throat> we had a lot of fun. We did. Yeah. What um so was it was would it have been Nancy's mom that you guys did something and she told you to, to go home and tell grandma to spank you? Oh no, that was a neighbor across the <laughs> That would have been my mom. <clears throat> no. No, that was a uh, the neighbor across that her name was Judy Lunt. Her dad had a grocery store. Oh yeah. And uh, I was over to Dewey's, I was probably oh seven or eight, and her dad uh, would bring home the samples of these uh, free hot, hot, uh, hot cereal sample boxes. So Judy and I were up in her playroom and we decided we would bet, mix us up some cereal. So we got a big dish pan out, we kept dumping boxes and dumping boxes, and then we add some <laughs> hot water and then it started to grow. So at one point it had come out of that pan so much, there was about this much all across the, the floor. We're now pushing each other down in it. Well, pretty soon there's a register that's now connected to the ceiling in the living room where her mother is sitting there reading and now cereal is dripping through the register on her head. <clears throat> she come up and she said, Judy, you're gonna get a spank and Patricia, you go home and tell your mother to spank you <laughs> like I'm going to. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But anyway, yep. So, that was so it, you two and then, and then Shirley, right? You guys were all in high school, yes. Shirley joined oh, our she came troop. Later, right? Much grade. later. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. didn't go through grade school with oh, us. Okay, all right. Well, what else did you guys do that got you in trouble? Oh, we'd like to go to the courthouse, and I would steal some cigarettes from my dad, and we'd sit in the courthouse and smoke. That was our. We yeah. thought we were being really. Yeah, we wild grabbed a camel and puff away. <laughs> <clears throat> I do remember one incident. The Methodist Church was selling neckties. So Nancy and I offered on a Saturday afternoon when it was snowy and cold to, drive, to go around the neighborhood and sell neckties. So we go up into her neighborhood and we knock on doors. Of course, we're laughing more than we're serious. And we open up the box to sell the necktie and the lid flies off. Now the neckties are laying in the snow. covered. With, we're laughing so hard we could have cared less. We got more doors shut in our face and no neckties sold. I don't, did we sell any neckties? <laughs> What was it, a fundraiser? Fundraiser, fundraiser for yeah. youth group, or I don't know, it was youth group or some kind well, of... Well, anyway, we didn't sell It was any. a fundraiser. There's something about a necktie laying in the snow <laughs> dirty that just doesn't appeal to anybody. <laughs> <clears throat> and then I remember another time. They lived in the uh, bigger house up on the, by the swimming pool, by the high school. Many stories there. Well, we had gone upstairs, and we were going through, nosing through her brother Vern, Jr.'s, and his wife Phyllis wedding gifts. Somewhere along the way, we open up a box to look at something. As we take this little figurine out, we break it. <clears throat> now we should have put it back in and played stupid, but Nancy goes down and gets glue. <laughs> well, that's a given, you know, giving yourself yeah. away. So we hope they never found it. I guess they did. If we they never, did, we never <clears throat> knew about it. And were you with me the time when Vern was doing the, working on the mural in the church and he had this beautiful black convertible and I was barely learning how to drive. I didn't have a driver's license or anything. I don't know if I'd driven once or twice before that. And the keys were in his car and we, I think you were with me, and we took the convertible and rode around the block and, and then parked it back. I mean this was a gorgeous black Mercury convertible. <clears throat> and I never told him about yeah. it till probably a few years before he died. <laughs> I, I, used to, I never <coughs> told him. I just always yeah. felt so guilty that I did that. Stole his car. Yeah. Stole my yeah. brother's car on a joyride. You were with me, weren't you? Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I, yeah. Somebody was yeah. with me. I yeah. think it could have been yeah. you, but it could have been Shirley. I'm not sure. I remember her brothers, Ray and Vern, who were about 11 months apart, were in college. And they'd bring home their books on anatomy. 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 anatomy I'm sorry. So Nancy and I would go get the books and go in her bedroom and shut the door. <laughs> By the time we were going to crack the book, one of her brothers would walk in and just grab the book and take it away. <laughs> he seemed to read our mind. <laughs> I think he knew who we were. I think he knew what we were up to. <laughs> now, what um, do you have a memory of, of my mom meeting my dad and they started dating? Yeah, I do. I mean, we did double date a lot. And uh, your dad, wonderful guy. 
always was. As a young guy. Who were you dating? Um, well, you know, there were probably several guys. <laughs> <laughs> All Anybody that I know? I doubt it. Anybody from the, like, dad softball team or? Yeah. 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 One of them was. I don't know if the other one was, but, yeah, I dated a so couple. So you met, you met my dad and, you, and he and mom started dating. What do you think? I thought they were meant for each other. They were crazy about each other. That was obvious. Obvious that your dad was nuts about your mom. And I'll never forget the day of his funeral when you, one of you from the family, showed the picture that he always carried in the billfold of your, your mom, her senior picture. And it just touched me because that's who your dad was. Your mom was everything to him. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I think the night I met Bob, it was a Saturday night in Blair on the street corner and the town girls <clears throat> would come to town on Saturday night to see what farm boys came into town on Saturday night. And I think it might have been Bonnie Christian and I were walking around one corner and Bob and somebody, I don't remember who, met us. And so Bob uh, said he'd walk me home. Well, I didn't really want him to walk me home, so I kind of walked real fast. <laughs> and I had to be home by 10. I had a dad like Nancy had a dad. Yeah. 10 means 10. Strict. And so I got to the Baptist church and I said, see ya. So I just cut three houses across for three reasons. I didn't want my dad to see a boy walking me home. I wasn't too sure I wanted him to walk me home. Mm -hmm. But the next Saturday night he was back mm -hmm. and it went from there. Now that, I, I like dating country boys because they had the big cars. Really, yeah. I mean town boys, you walked on the dates. So that brought up a Bob memory didn't. to me. That Bob had old Bob must, <laughs> Bob, had nothing. But the, the couple that I dated had some pretty nice, oh, yeah, they were yeah. their dad's cars, of course. But that was always kind of, to me, I kind of liked that. I liked being <clears throat> driven around in a car <clears throat> to a date, not having to walk to the movie theater or whatever. <clears throat> Bob's pickup was Call me a gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> Which they were always... The thing we, we have reminisced about just recently is our detasseling. If you can believe these two, the two of us detasseled corn for three summers. Mm -hmm. And that was hard work. And as short as I was in the field, like Pat said, I left a lot of stock. No, you stocks. just replanted them. <laughs> I <can say. laughs> I replanted. But anyway, we did that. And yeah. that's kind of amazing yeah. because we were two town girls who didn't know a thing about the country or hard work. And it was hard I work. I told somebody I went from a chubby eighth grader <laughs> And detasseled it between my eighth grade and ninth grade, and went from a chubby eighth grader to a skinny ninth grader from sweating it off yeah. in the fields. It was work. Yeah, it was yeah. work. For but we, we had fun. It oh, was yeah. so much fun. You two have known each other for 75 years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't That's remember sure. not knowing Nancy. Yeah, I, I, probably long. Well, we were in 4 H together, we were in Girl Scouts together, yep. we tap danced together. We were, and yeah. we always found something to laugh about. We laughed our way through life. And we're still doing that. During COVID, your yeah. mom and I would get on the phone, and we were great support system oh, yeah. for each other. Oh, yeah, I look forward to it. Because we needed that at that point, and your mom, too. And so we would, we found, yeah. always, we always find something yeah. to laugh about. That's the best thing about we our We didn't friendship. talk about troubles. We talked no. about happy we, try, we don't talk I mean, about we our did, health. We or, didn't dwell on We don't dwell no, on we our health. Dwell or, yeah. We dwell on the, the fun, yeah. fun, funny yeah. things in life. Across from here is the old Blair Home Theater. And I think I saw every change in the movie from, uh, there was weekend, Tuesday night, and back to the weekend, Saturday afternoon Western. For a brief time, uh, when I was 16, we lived in an apartment up over the theater just for three months. I'm at the Blair Park, which back in the day was called the Blair Swimming Pool and Picnic Area. Uh, the swimming pool is off to my right and has maintained its Spanish style for the last years. In fact, my mother's a young girl worked in the concession stand there. So that's how many years that swimming pool goes back into the 20s. It's uh, noticed a lot of the beautiful trees, which this is the end of Blair. They started planting trees back when Blair was founded. So Blair is noted for its trees. Uh, and other memories were on Saturday, Sunday afternoon they would have the sing-alongs. They had a woman at the piano, and then of course they put the big uh, lights up in the trees, and they had a woman at the piano, and then they had uh, a guy running the slides, and people would come and sing along. And it was during the war year, so sometimes it was kind of sad because some of the, of the uh, participants had uh, family in the military. <clears throat> but I do remember then they would play bingo, 
and there would be prizes, which were usually lawn chairs. But it was what they called back in those years, free entertainment, and people appreciated that. So a lot of good memories between the sing-alongs and the, and the swimming pool, which I went every morning as a kid because I had a, uh, what they call a season ticket. So I'd get up in the morning and go s swimming, and then when all the country kids come in the afternoon, us town kids would jump out and let them have it. So another good memory. I was in a play called Grey Bread. Nancy Bellows, Gabby, and I ran it together. And it was a peasant time of peasant farmers back up in the hills raising goats. And the last line in the play, which happened to be mine, was, there are the goats to mine at early dawn, there is milking when the sun is high, and there is a house that I shall make into a home. The last line. <laughs>